Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus Channel. Landing an aircraft involves reducing speed and altitude. Aligning with the runway and applying brakes at touchdown. But sometimes, due to bad weather conditions, mechanical problems, overweight aircraft or pilot error, the plane may hit the ground with greater vertical speeds than normal. This condition is known as hard landing. When this occurs, the high friction generated by the plane's disc brakes, coupled with the tire friction on the runway, usually produces sparks and smoke, which may evolve into a fire. In today's feature, we will explore the various methods put in place by both aircraft manufacturers and airport authorities to rapidly cool aircraft brakes in order to avoid potentially dangerous landing gear fires. When most aircraft hit the runway, the sudden rotation causes the peak temperature on their tire tread to reach 400 degrees Celsius and even more. This causes overheating in the aircraft tires, which are mostly composed of rubber and nylon fabrics with critical temperatures of just over 200 degrees Celsius. To keep the tire from exploding or catching fire when the wheels get too hot, fuse plugs or thermal plugs are mounted inside the wheel hub when they are manufactured. During aircraft pre-testing for companies like Boeing, the role of this device and its functioning are strictly monitored. We are monitoring the uh, wheels, um, the tires themselves deflate per design. They have devices called fuse plugs within the, uh, the, the wheels themselves that melt under high temperature and then in a very controlled fashion release the pressure of the air of the nitrogen in the tire so they don't blow treads. We want to make sure that that occurs in a very controlled fashion. Also, overpressure relief valves, or OPRVs, help to release the nitrogen in the tires when they attain critical pressures during hard landings. On a large aircraft like the Boeing 767, the disc in the OPRVs can rupture and release pressures up to 450 psi. Furthermore, many modern aircraft have brake temperature monitoring systems in the form of sensors attached to the wheels themselves. This enables the pilot to monitor the heat level of each main gear wheel on cockpit indicators. Sometimes during extreme conditions such as rejected takeoff or RTO, when an aircraft is forced to rapidly apply brakes on the runway to abort a takeoff after reaching high speeds, brakes and wheels can heat up excessively. In these situations, external spray cooling techniques are preferred. Water mist is sprayed all over the wheels and brake assembly to quickly quench the scorching temperatures. RTOs are also applied during simulations to heat up the landing gear systems when evaluating the effectiveness of emergency response at airports. Once the plane has stopped, Emergency response teams delay their arrival by five minutes. That is the average minimum time estimated for a fire brigade to reach an aircraft during distress situations in real life. The stress of hard landings usually calls for very close inspection on the tires. In some cases, the tires need to be removed, repaired if necessary, and then replaced again. The process of tire removal starts with lifting the wheel. This is done with a jack appropriately placed under the lift point in the landing gear. With a clever feat of engineering, aircraft tire jacks operate by using the nitrogen in the tires themselves. Once the tire is removed, the two rim sections are opened and inspected for cracks or other damages. The brakes and the drums are also checked thoroughly. 
If a fault is discovered, the tire is either repaired or kept aside and instantly replaced. If no damage is found, the tire components are properly greased and pieced together again. The retaining nuts are reattached and the small nuts and bolts around it are tightened. It is checked multiple times as an extra safety measure. Tire pressure is measured by the mechanic and nitrogen level is properly adjusted. On the other hand, these kinds of meticulous examination methods are not applied on train wheel axles. Unlike airplane tires, train wheels remain in constant contact with the rails while supporting the heavy loads of the train carriages. This puts a lot of stress on the wheel axles, which are also exposed to fluctuating climatic conditions. Most of these axles are simply discarded as dangerous as soon as corrosion fatigue sets in. To remedy the situation, a company in Wales known as TWI Limited has come up with a non-destructive testing instrument. This helps to examine and identify the various stages of crack fatigue on railway wheel axles. It uses microscopes and digital monitoring systems to enhance the surface inspection to determine the remaining life of the axles despite their physical conditions. These ultrasonic scans are of two main types. The far end scan, which ranges between 0 to 5 degrees and covers the middle part of the axle, while the near-end scan consists of up to a 20-degree angle to inspect the inner wheel set as well as the wheel set transition area. Just as the wheels and axles need inspection and repairs, the railway lines also need to be checked and regularly grinded to remove corrosion, cracks, and other deformants before they spread. The grinding of rail lines is done with a rail grinding machine, or RGM. What you can see behind me is a uh, rail grinder. What it does is actually take the metal off the uh, rail and smooths out the rail, uh, which actually provide a smoother ride for passengers and increase the life of our asset. These machines come in various sizes and shapes. Small, hand-operated rail grinders are moved laterally on small rail sections to correct localized defects. When it comes to grinding longer rail sections stretching for miles, massive rail grinding machines like the Lorem Rail Grinder RG400 are called in. They sit on the rails like actual trains and roll along at 10 miles per hour as their 10-inch embedded stones grind on the rail surfaces throwing up fiery sparks. The machines carry over 500 gallons of water, which is simultaneously sprayed along the track. This quenches the sparks and prevents a fire from erupting. Rail inspection vehicles analyze the rail prior to grinding, while the operator monitors the entire process on screens in real time. Even with all the grinding, sometimes a whole track section gets damaged and needs to be replaced. This usually involves the use of flash butt welding machines. The damaged section is cut out by workers with hand cutters and removed by powerful cranes. Then, the new rail is positioned after which the machine is gently lowered and positioned on the section. Flash butt rail welding machines weigh over 20,000 pounds and possess a clamping force of up to 2,000. The machine clamps the rail heads together, welds and grinds them, leaving a smooth, continuous section behind. With each passing day, technological advancements in air and rail transportation maintenance systems are making things better. as machines bring more efficiency and accuracy into otherwise difficult processes. 
That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.